When you calculate the enthalpy for a chemical reaction, one way to do it is think about taking all the reactants, breaking them up into atoms, and then taking those atoms and forming the products. In order to do that, you need to know the bond enthalpies of all the reactant bonds and all the bond enthalpies of the product bonds. So you need a table that looks like this. Here I've calculated average bond enthalpies. And I say average bond enthalpy because this carbon-carbon single bond, 348 kilojoules per mole, that doesn't represent the exact bond enthalpy for, say, the carbon-carbon bond in ethane. It's an average over a lot of molecules. So it's the average carbon-carbon bond, say, in ethane, butane, benzene, over a wide variety of molecules. Same thing for the double bond and the triple bond. Some of these are exact, of course. Hydrogen-hydrogen, there's only one kind of hydrogen-hydrogen bond. So 436 kilojoules is the exact bond enthalpy for hydrogen-hydrogen. But carbon-oxygen, that's an average. Now there's a couple interesting things to notice on this table. Notice carbon-carbon single bonds and carbon-carbon double bonds, on average, the double bond is not twice as strong as the single bond for carbon. But conversely, if you look at the oxygen single bond and the oxygen-oxygen double bond, that's more than twice. So we can't make direct correlations between the bond strength and the number of bonds from our average bond enthalpy tables. Now, we've calculated reaction enthalpies in a different way. We also said take the enthalpies of formation of all the reactants and subtract away the enthalpies of formation of all the products. Now, if we do that, we need a table of standard enthalpies of formation. So what's the difference between those two methods? using the standard enthalpies of formation or the standard bond enthalpies. Well, think about this. If you need to use the enthalpies of formation and you need to go from reactants to products, to have a wide variety of enthalpies that you can calculate, you need to know the enthalpy of formation of virtually every compound in existence to go from the enthalpies of formation of all the reactants to the enthalpies of formation of all the products. So you need an incredibly extensive table of enthalpies of formation. But when you think about what bonds you're actually breaking and making, especially if you're working in, say, organic chemistry with hydrocarbons a lot, you're only using four or five, six different kinds of bonds, carbon, carbon bonds, carbon-hydrogen bonds, carbon-oxygen bonds. So with a dozen or so average bond enthalpies, you have the power to calculate enthalpies for reactions over a wide variety of chemical reactions. So that's the power of this method. But you do give up something. Remember, these are average bond enthalpies. So you're making an estimate of the enthalpy of reaction. If you use the standard enthalpies of formation, that would be exact. So it's a trade-off between a large table and a small table, exactness and an estimate. Now notice these two tables are related. So if you look, say, how, what's the standard enthalpy of formation of hydrogen atoms? That's 218 kilojoules per mole of hydrogen atoms. If you look at breaking the hydrogen-hydrogen bond, that says 436 kilojoules. And that makes sense. That's twice my enthalpy of formation. Because when I break this bond, I add 436 kilojoules, I get two moles of hydrogen atoms. So two moles, twice the standard enthalpy of formation of hydrogen. So I find a relationship between the tables. There are strengths and weaknesses of each method of calculating enthalpies for chemical reactions. The strength here is let me remember just a small number of things and be able to calculate for a wide variety of chemical reaction. That's the strength of average bond enthalpies.